turn your rough thumbnail sketches like this into epic concept arts like this. Using 3D models without even having to know any complex 3D softwares at all. Do you want to be a concept artist and really level up your game? Then at some point you will really need to know the 3D pipeline. Using 3D in your concept art workflow can help you easily achieve vast and complicated environments. But it's a steep learning curve. Transitioning to 3D can be very technical, tough or even boring for traditional artists. So what if you don't know 3D? Is there a shortcut? Is there a way to bypass this and still be a top-notch concept artist? What if I told you that Rodin Gen 1 does exactly that? With the help of its advanced generative AI technology, Rodin lets you easily incorporate 3D into your 2D workflow without ever needing you to know any 3D software. And in this video, I'll explain exactly how they're able to achieve this and how Rodin Gen 1 can help you use 3D in your workflow and easily create complex scenes with the help of their advanced 3D AI tech that can turn any 2D image into 3D models with high quality textures and rendering and all that without needing you to know any 3D softwares. So make sure to like this video, subscribe and stay back till the end. So I made this rough thumbnail sketch of a sci-fi scene with a big space warship landing or maybe taking off. Pretty basic composition, I'm happy with how this turned out and now I want to create the final detailed concept art based on this composition. The biggest challenge here would be to create this big spaceship in a low angle 3 point perspective. This is where Rodin Gen 1 comes in handy. I'll go to my browser and type Hyperhuman Rodin. Click on either of the top two results, let the page load. By the way, they also have this cool tool called Chat Avatar that lets you turn any portrait image into highly detailed 3D models in just a few seconds. Just drag and drop the photo and watch the magic happen. Now let's switch over to Rodin and before we dive into the main process, I'll quickly show you how this 2D to 3D conversion works with a simple example. So I have this image of a treasure chest. I'll drag and drop it here and click on generate. It'll take around 5 to 10 seconds to upload and you'll be able to see the model load up. It won't have any texture details right away, just the base 3D mesh. You can rotate it to see if you like how it turned out. If you're not satisfied, then you can redo it a bunch of times until you're happy with the result. Let's click on confirm to lock it. Next up, we have the material generation or texturing section. For this, I'll mix things up by using an image of a different treasure chest to see how well it adapts with this model. I'll click on generate and there we go. It's done a pretty neat job, lots of details as well. Now I'll click on confirm and export it by either downloading the 3D model or publishing it to Sketchfab for people to view. So there it was. That's how easy it was. Now I'll show you how I use this technology to speed up and enhance my 2D concept art process. So the first thing we need to make this rough thumbnail sketch look awesome is create a cool spaceship that matches the perspective and framing of this composition. So I'll head over to Rodin again, click on text input and type the prompt, something like huge sci-fi space warship. Click on this check button and see the result. And I can keep clicking on the redo button to get more options of AI generated spaceship designs. Once I'm happy with an image, I'll confirm it. Now I'll get an option to add more images. So I'll mix things up here a little and instead of prompting, I'll just drag and drop an image of a spaceship that I like a lot. Now, once I click on generate, I get these two options, multi-view and fusion. These two images are completely different, so I'll choose fusion. What this does is it gives a result that's a hybrid of the two input images provided. That way the result stays somewhat original. All right, so the 3D model looks really nice. Now here's a slider for the fusion. I can move the slider away from one input image towards the other. That way I can control which of the two images will have more impact on the resulting model. And I'll click on redo to regenerate the model based on these tweaks. I can redo a bunch of times until I'm happy with the result. I'll click on confirm and now I can check the model in detail. See the wireframe up close. We can also use mesh editor up here to do some additional sculpting on the model to make it more personalized. It's super easy and does not require any advanced 3D software knowledge. It's just like painting with a brush. Once I'm satisfied, I'll click on confirm. Now for the material generation, I can choose the texture of either of the two input images or upload a fresh image altogether. I'll try with the second image first and generate. 
awesome. So that's how it looks. I'll change the viewing mode from shader to PBR and it's got some nice glossy metallic look. Very cool. Once you're satisfied with the result, you can choose the high poly option from down here. Keep the material as it is, PBR and 1K or change it to 4K if you want more details but it'll take much longer to render. Next it's time to export the model. So before exporting, I went ahead and tried generating a few more spaceship models until I was really happy with the result. I'll click on publish and it'll ask for my permission to post it on Sketchfab. You just have to make sure that you have a Sketchfab account which is free by the way and sign in. Now it'll take a couple of minutes to finish rendering and get uploaded on Sketchfab. Once it's done, I'll get an option to view the model on Sketchfab. I'll click on that and it'll open up a new window and take me to Sketchfab where I can now view the model in detail. I can rotate the model, shift its position, change the angle, zoom in and out using the mouse buttons and even change the light direction by pressing Alt on the keyboard and using the left mouse button to move the light source around. Really awesome, isn't it? Now I'll copy the URL of the model. Go to Google and search for Sketchfab screenshots and click on the first result. Now I'll click on load scene, go to from URL, paste the link and click on load. This will load up our spaceship model. Once again we can move and rotate it around. Now I'll click on transparent background. Now I'll pose the model in a way so that it matches with the perspective of our thumbnail sketch. Now I'll click on export screenshot and it'll get downloaded with a transparent background. Rodin has done a fantastic job so far. Now it's time for some Photoshop wizardry. So I've created a new document in Photoshop and imported our thumbnail sketch in here. I've also opened it up on the top right corner for reference. Now I'll drag and drop the spaceship model image into Photoshop. It looks quite good. Now I'll click on Ctrl T to freely transform it and manipulate the perspective and scale until I feel it more or less matches with our thumbnail sketch. The spaceship in the sketch is a bit longer than our model, so I'll duplicate our spaceship layer, rasterize it and transform it further to create an extension of the front part of the spaceship so that it looks longer. And then use the lasso tool to select and erase the excess areas. I like how it looks so far, thanks to Rodin. Now I'll create a new layer to paint a flat block shape for the ground. Then on the very bottom layer, I'll import an image of an atmospheric, moody and cloudy sky. I'll scale it up and make it fit the entire background. Now I'll use the lasso tool to block out the background mountains on different layers. Now I'll go to the sky layer and use Ctrl L for levels adjustment to make it slightly darker and Ctrl B for color adjustment to make the sky look more reddish. Now I'll use a soft brush to paint some clouds or fog to create a more smoother light to dark gradient in the sky. And now for the spaceship, I'll take adjustment layers such as levels and color balance to make it darker and shift the colors to more warmer tones. Next I'll use the multiply blending mode on the new layer to paint shadows or darken some areas and use the overlay blending mode on a new layer to paint some strong highlights on the rear part of the spaceship using a bright warm color. Now for the ground, I'll use an image of a dry desert ground and set it to clipping mask and make it dark. Paint some highlights and reflections in the middle. Then paint some fog near the horizon to create more atmospheric depth. Now it's time to add some bright lights on the spaceship. I'll create the light strips separately and use free transform to fit the perspective of the ship. Guys, if you have any questions so far, feel free to comment below and I'll do my best to read and answer them all. Now I'll create a new layer, set it to hard light mode and paint some strong spotlights. Now I'll paint some soft bright light behind the spaceship and also paint some fog effect below and over the spaceship to create more atmospheric depth. The rough thumbnail sketch that I've kept open on the side is acting as a nice guide for this whole process. I'll add a few more brighter haze around the lights and the horizon. I used a couple of color lookups to color grade the overall scene and used a dark off focus silhouette of a soldier in the foreground for more balance. And finally, to add some finishing touches, I'll make this look more sci-fi-ish by painting a huge planet in the sky. I'll make a big round selection with the marquee tool and use a soft brush to paint some subtle highlights on the left side. Now instead of keeping it yellow and making the scene look monochromatic, I'll adjust the hue of the highlights and shift it towards blue to introduce some color harmony in the scene. Now coming to the pricing, each credit costs $1.5, which is quite expensive. But if you take a creator membership for a month, it's much cheaper. And a business membership is even cheaper. There's half a dollar per credit instead of 1.5. And you get a flat 20% discount if you go for yearly memberships. Also, you can refer your friends to earn 25% more bonus credits while they earn 50% more. 
The more you refer, the more free credits you earn. It's a win-win. Use my referral code in the description down below to earn 50% more credits on your first purchase. If you liked this video and found it helpful, don't forget to like the video, share, comment, subscribe and click on the bell icon to get notified as soon as I upload my next video. So that's all for now, see you on the next one, peace.